Hello there short friends. Today I have some fittings to share with you and in a nutshell it's all of all of this stuff and I'll I'll talk about it. So first off let's talk about this. So these are a set of Fuchi, Kasher, and a Kojiri. This is the Kojiri, the end cap for a, uh, a sword scabbard. It's metal so if you whack it on the ground presumably it's better. I'm just using it to illustrate because they all have this very similar patterning on them uh, and so it's it's easiest to share some of the Fuchi, Kasher, and Kojiri texture because they don't have any additional engraving or anything like that on them. Uh, these are uh, basically have this kind of hammered texture. I don't know if it's hammered or chiseled or what it is. And then this deep Rokusho patina, this darkened copper patinated look to them. So it, it I mean, for a simple set of Fuchi Kashura Kojiri, this is not overly embellished or elaborate in any way. It doesn't have carvings or anything like that. But the addition of this texture, I think, adds a lot of depth and artistry to the piece, and it's something when you look at it closely, you can you can kind of appreciate every little hammer stroke or whack with a chisel. Um, anyway, they all have this texture on them. Shape-wise, this uh, kashra, or I'm sorry, this fuchi is is on the the larger side, uh, so it's made to fit a more modern katana. You can see some of the the details in here. Uh, it has this same pattern, but again, no no additional. Uh, no additional bits of embellishment other than the the pattern and the the kasha at the end is kind of matching same type of thing the strokes on here seem a little bit smaller but uh, overall it matches quite well the manuki are something from a different batch so these are gargoyle manuki also made by Patrick Hastings I just included them because they were made by the same hand but it wasn't intended to go with this set uh, these are, are crafted Pretty little manuki. You can see they are they are cool looking, and they are made in a uh, well. Basically, this isn't uh, just a piece of cast metal. This is I don't know exactly how he makes it, honestly. But in any case, these are hollow in the back, and this seems to be the way traditional Japanese manuki are made. If I bring out an example here, you can see that quite often antique pieces have this have the same type of construction method, and I, I don't really know what it is. But a more modern manuki, like this one from a very cheap katana, uh, is just a lump of cast, cast stuff. It doesn't have the same hollow bits in it, and I, again, I, I wish I could explain it in more depth, but these are more delicate and lighter versus something, something like this, which is an inexpensive casting from a Musashi katana. The real cool part is this, this suba right here. And the part that makes it cool is, well, I mean, I suppose, look at it. One, it has a raised rim with the same type of texture around the rim as you would see on the Fuchikashira Kojiri area, so it matches really well. It's got a flat surface here, but, uh, and I, I suppose, you know, I, I like to see them when they're raised and have a little bit more than just a flat surface, but that's not really that big a deal. Uh, what you do see are just some cool examples of carving and engraving. So right here you can see there is like a bit of I don't know, dead wood carved in. It's pretty straightforward and simple, but you can make out clear enough what it is. The rim is raised also pretty high. There's no sharp ledges or anything like that, but this, you know, we'll see how it mounts up. If your fingers get on it, I'd imagine you could, it would be uncomfortable. Anyway, it looks really cool. It's a really big raised rim. On the other side, we see Patrick Hastings' signature here, and probably the, the coolest part of the Subu, this, this little detail right here, this engraving, or this... I do, I, these are inlays of some sort, this metal work anyway. Uh, you can make out a lot of different textures in the wood. It looks like there's little spots of, of gold on it and, and they add to the depth and texture. The log sticking out here has different kind of work. It's really sharp and jutted like the, you know, like if the bark falls off a branch and the wood underneath is exposed. Uh, and it has these really sharp corners versus soft. This mushroom here I just think is, is really cool. It has the, I'm going to use this Manuki as a pointer. It has these little little pieces that you see underneath the mushroom. I don't know exactly what they're called but it looks like if you're looking underneath the mushroom and right where the stem meets it has these little additional little file working markings that just add to the detail. It's, it's very it's very detailed and very pretty and I just I never get a chance to own Subas of this quality. It just, it just doesn't happen for me regularly. So as you know, I'm a fan of the swirly Mitsudome theme. This is, this is, uh, I think of, has more interesting detail in it than the type of Suba I typically, uh, have the luxury of getting, and, uh, the mushroom theme isn't, isn't necessarily so bad. I kind of like it. Honestly, uh, I have these 
antique fly Manuki that maybe go better with the dead wood theme than anything else. I'm not entirely sure, but in any case, I really like it. This is a uh, work from Patrick Hastings, if I didn't mention it before. And Patrick Hastings was really a lot, very active and, and kind of the guy to have fittings made by uh, a number of years ago. Since I've, I've met a lot of very good, talented people that do Japanese metalwork, but Patrick Hastings still remains among some of the the most talented craftsman, and I, I really I really admire his work. I haven't seen a lot of it lately. I'm not sure what the guy's up to, uh, but he at one point was making making a lot of suba like this, and maybe maybe he still is. I'm not sure. In any case, uh, if you happen to see Patrick Hastings' work or you're interested, this is some of, of what the man is capable of. Certainly not the limit by any stretch of the imagination. I think this is probably on the simple side, all things considered for him. But uh, in any case, I, I really, really like the Suba. And so I thought I would share it with you. Anyway, that's all I got for you, sword friends. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.